You all see this tiny rod? Wait till you see what's in my backpack. For the longest time, I've been trying to figure out what's beneath the ocean surface when I'm rock fishing from shore. Well, today I figured it's a good time to figure it out live, in person, underwater. So I'm going to jump in and I'm going to fish it. But first, I got to change, so please excuse me for a second. So I'm not going to go over all the safety stuff today. There's really only one thing you got to remember. Pretty much, just don't do this and you'll be fine. Just watch. We'll be good. I've caught a lot of fish with this reel. It served me good. Today I'm going to sacrifice it to the fish gods. Once I dunk it underwater, it's probably going to be rendered useless. And I wanted something where I could fish with and you could see the action. So I got this little tiny M rod. That's what it's called. I think that was the only thing that was going to work for today. I'm going to start out fishing this little jig. I'm going to go around, swim around. If I see any cabazon on the bottom, jig them. If I see a school of blacks and blues, man, it won't be hard at all to get them on this. So this is the Fisherman's Life Jiggy Jig. If you want to buy one, you can check it out at fishermanslife.net. Now I'm going to rig up. I got my little float. Water looks really clear. I'm about as excited today as I have been for anything in a long time. Whew, really hot too, so I think it's about time to get in the water. Y'all ready for this? Let's go. First thing I thought of when I jumped in the water was, man, it's freezing, I forgot my gloves. But that turned out to work in my favor because I had a little bit more dexterity without gloves. So the goal here from the start was just finding little holes. I was hoping the water would be clear enough also where I could find some blacks and blues, jig them up mid-water column. But as I was swimming around, I saw a little kelp greenling. You could see it down there. And I see it go for the bait a lot, but every time it does, I try to jig it up, but I miss it. For some reason, it's not going and biting and committing to the hook. So I decided just to move on a little deeper water. Now it's a little murky today, so I was in search for clearer water, but just jigging down and uh, just like as if it was from shore. And I feel my first hookup on the underwater snorkel fishing. This was such an exciting moment for me down there. Out there, I should say. A kelp greenling, probably about 10 inches. On the, green, on the greenling jiggy jig too. That's a little M rod with that coil. It's perfect for this. And that water was so cold. See you later, little guy. So I was just, you know, going out there trying to search for clear water. A bunch of jellyfish here and there. And after looking at this footage, I couldn't believe how much I looked like a seal, especially with those little whiskers I've got. Underwater it looks just like a seal, especially with that big black wetsuit. But as I was swimming to the other side, I saw one pinnacle. I know you can't see it, but got hooked up immediately. And what happens next blew my mind. Looks like a nice gopher. Nice gopher. Now check this out. Whoa. Whoa. Little lingcod, huh? Little hungry lingcod trying to eat some live bait. Man, that was cool. Released himself. See you later, buddy. Alright, 
Time to move spots. Now, here I swim a good 200 yards. Just trying to find something shallow. I'm really not targeting the deep, deep water because I want something on the on the video. I want, want you guys to see the structure. I want to see the bite. I'm trying to learn something here, you know? So, I found some structure with a sharp, deep drop-off. Dropping down, jigging. If I'm not feeling bottom, I'm opening the bale, jigging down again, letting it drop. Now this right here was even more crazy. This blew my mind again. Check this out. What Did I hook a lingcod? No, I didn't. But I hooked a rockfish and this lingcod is aggressive. So I open the bale and I let that fish swim down and the lingcod chases it. It seems like they don't really chase it when it's just up, kind of floating, swimming on top, but look at that. Look at that. Just inspecting it, man. And then I open the bale again. And these lingcod, they were hanging out for a good 45 seconds. Like, there, there, there it is again on the top of the screen. But <laughs> I figured I tortured this fish enough. So, just going to give him a little piercing here. Oh, gosh. Pooped on me. Little piercing. Better than being lingcod food. Probably got eight on the way down, honestly. Now, this is where I started to feel a little seasick. And I was in the middle of the ocean. Started thinking about sharks. Started thinking about what if I cramped. Started thinking about what if something bad happened. It's really easy to start panicking when you're out there. Especially with no land around you and you're alone. So probably not a good idea to do this alone. But look at that. Went to a new rock. First drop. Like dead weight. That's what it feels like from shore too sometimes. Dead weight. Boom. Until they fight. Now listen to that sound. You hear that? These cabazon, they eat shellfish and crabs. And in their throat, they grind them down. Just take, take a listen. Take a listen. Crazy, huh? Imagine getting your finger down his throat and him grinding it, grinding it down. I'm just trying to get a good grip on him, but that's a keeper. That's a keeper cabazon. That's probably about 17, 17 inches, maybe 18 inches. There we go. Now just watch how fast he swims down too. Once I unhook him. Gone. He's probably mind blown himself. He doesn't know what just happened. There it is. nuts oh man that was nuts Woo. so the total time I was out there was about 50 minutes tried to find a school of blacks blues but couldn't find any that was a big surprise to me another big surprise I didn't catch any link out with the jig although the jig it did work it worked really well caught a kelp greenling looked like two black and yellows and what was really interesting was the link cod came up for the black and yellows. I've caught so many cabazon with jigs like this and I think it's because the cabazon, they eat crabs off the rock. So this almost looks like a little crab walking along the rock, especially this color. So the big cabazon, I feel like they're more likely to bite the jig and the lingcod, that was amazing to see them just come up for the black, black and yellow or whatever, China, the black and yellow, I think, just that live rockfish. And they came right up to my face. That was crazy man that was so cool but i was getting tired 
you know, I'm out here alone. I didn't want to push my luck. I even started to feel a little bit seasick. So I just came back to shore, but man, that was amazing. All right, y'all. Man, that was fun. Hope y'all got you guys enjoyed that. Peace.